Hello and welcome to the 4i Magazine podcast. I am Federica Bressan and today we talk about the James Webb Space Telescope with Antonella Nota, a project scientist for the James Webb Space Telescope at ESA, the European Space Agency. Let's go! Welcome, Antonella. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. So today's topic is the James Webb Space Telescope, the largest and most powerful telescope to be sent into space. The telescope is ready to launch on December 18th this year, 2021, so a few weeks away from today. How is the preparation going? Is everything ready? Everything is ready. We are absolutely ready. We have been waiting for this moment for a long time. Uh, at the European Space Agency, we are so excited that we are part of this mission. As you know, uh, ESA is a partner with NASA in this amazing mission, which will revolutionize our understanding of astronomy. And we could not be happier and more um, excited waiting for December 18th to see this magnificent observatory taking off and producing incredible science. So I hear you have high expectations, but maybe not everybody knows what's special about this telescope. For example, what is the main difference between a, a telescope on Earth and a telescope that you actually send into space? Sending a telescope into space allows you to remove the effect of the atmosphere. So you're above the atmosphere that produces that nice tinkling uh, of the stars that we enjoy seeing in the night sky. But for astronomers, it's really a disaster because we cannot um, observe directly the targets with the precision and the accuracy and the, the, the clarity that we need to do our science. So going outside the atmosphere, you know, we have a stable uh, environment that allows for very, very accurate measurements. And this is what we will need to, um, you know, to fulfill the, the goals of the, space, of the James Webb Space Telescope. Just before we go into what the telescope actually does, from the, I mean, how long does it take for it to reach its destination? And what is this target destination? So James Webb will be at the Lagrangian point number two. Lagrangian points are these places in the universe where there is a very stable uh, orbit situation with respect to Earth, the Sun. So we'll be there and we'll be orbiting around this Lagrangian point. The beauty of having the telescope at L2, that's what astronomers say, L2, um, is that it will be able to observe 24-7. So there are no obstructions to the, to the field of view of the telescope. So we will get plenty of data and plenty of observations throughout the day, day after day. And this is not possible, for example, if the telescope is in a low Earth orbit like the Hubble Space Telescope is, where at 350 nautical miles, there is the Earth in between. So we have to carefully plan around uh, the, the, tar the target visibility around the, the um, visibility of the Earth. So James Webb will be very powerful, very sensitive, 100 times more sensitive than Hubble, will operate in the infrared because that's an area that where we expect um, new information to come in for the main scientific goals of the telescope that is observing the distant universe and also uh, study um, uh, how stars form, evolve and die and uh, atmosphere around uh, planets outside our solar system, which are the main themes that the uh, web will cover. I cannot wait to get to this point, but first, how does this telescope like look like? Uh, it unfolds after launch. You don't launch it as it will be there. How does it look like? We call it the origami telescope because <laughs> in order, because the mirror is really big, it's 6.5 meters in diameter, magnificent beryllium mirror coated in gold. It's really uh, amazing when you see, I had the fortune to see it um, in, in the clean room at the Gorda Space Flight Center. Like actual it, gold? It's actual, yeah, it's coated in gold. It's really, really magnificent view to see it. So it's folded up because it has to fit in the fairing of the Ariane 5 rocket, which will launch it into space. And then we'll open up. And the journey from Earth to the Lagrangian point two is approximately a month. 
So during that month, we will have the Sun Shield deploying. The Sun Shield is this um, uh, uh, huge uh, like uh, shield that is necessary to keep the telescope uh, uh, repair um, to keep the telescope uh, shielded against the solar radiation because it's an infrared telescope and it has to operate at a very cold temperature. And so for any observation, the sun shield will basically protect the telescope from the, the, the really warm solar radiation, even at L2. Um, so it will take a month to get there. And along the way, we'll deploy the sun shield. The sun shield is five layers, is as big as a tennis court. Just to give you an idea of the of the greatness of this observatory, and we'll open the mirror because the mirror will be folded in three. You know, in three, it has two outside petals, and then we'll deploy the secondary mirror. And when it arrives to L two, will be fully fully deployed. And at that point, you know, all the activities of calibrations, verifications will start. Do you expect to see something or we are observing and we're we're not looking for anything specific in space we're just observing No I mean I think that the uh, so what is important to understand is that this will be used by the scientific community this telescope will be used by the scientific community to observe their uh, scientific uh, targets so there has been a process, a very rigorous process that happens where people submit their ideas all over, from all over the world. You just need a laptop and an idea and you can submit your wish list, what you want to do with the James Webb Space Telescope, what instruments do you want to use, for how long do you want to take an image or to take a spectrum. And uh, your idea is evaluated by a committee of your peers in an absolutely anonymous way, and only the best ideas are selected, and those are actually queued in to go and be observed at the telescope. So the telescope will actually move from target to target on the sky and look at different objects and will use different instruments and different configurations because at the end, the astronomer will get all this precious data and they will be able to do whatever scientific you know, idea they had to fulfill that scientific project. So the, um, the calendar is already full for the first year. And the, the observations will really start six months after launch because the first six months, not only the telescope has to get to L2, but then all the instruments have to be calibrated. And verification, the telescope has to get to the temperature it needs to operate, and the instruments need to be calibrated. And you will know when all that part is finished, because you will see the beautiful images and spectra that will be released approximately 200 days after launch, which we called early release observations, which are a very um, uh, restricted and confidential list of targets, which will show to the entire world that you know this telescope is as magnificent as we were expecting it to be. So with so, so many stay tuned for that. <laughs> with so many actors on Earth using the telescope all the time, there is a constant communication then back and forth with instructions and, and data, correct? Yes, there is a, we have a mission control at the Space Telescope Science Institute. Uh, so they will be in constant communication with the telescope and they will upload the commands. Basically every week, you know, they will upload the calendar of commands that will execute and will do the observations that we were just describing, going from target to target, doing their calibrations and basically sending down to earth. Uh, the data that they that they achieve, but yes, there will be constant communication because between the mission operation and the observatory. How long does it take for, you know, uh, for communication to go from the Earth to the telescope or back? 
so it's just uh, it depends on the amount of data that you're transferring because there is a constant rate coming down the in terms of distance is only a few seconds delay but what matters is the size of the data set that you are you're transmitting to earth but it's pretty quick so um it could be it, it's few... quicker than my wi-fi at home probably yes <laughs> <laughs> Probably yes, but basically uh, it will be immediately, you know, coming down. You know, it's, uh, the communication go through the deep space network, which will be, uh, you know, um, allowing to, to communicate with the telescope at any given time, and and then it will go on Earth. Will will arrive in the um, uh, control room and eventually will be put in the in the web archive where they will be available for uh, um, the very anxious principal investigators to see. How long do you plan to keep the telescope operating in space? Uh, as long as possible, as long as feasible. I think that the mission, the nominal mission is five years, but we are expecting, depending a little bit on, on, on the orbit, the initial orbit, uh, you know, 10 years would be uh, fantastic, maybe a little more. So we hope that we will have James Webb with us for a long time, especially because we expect it to operate in synergy with uh, the other telescope that we follow, the Hubble Space Telescope, which, you know, will complement nicely in terms of wavelength. You know, one is UV optical, James Webb is infrared. It will be a very powerful duo in orbit, doing a lot, a lot of science studies. I look forward to seeing the first pictures that will be released, images and, and spectra. And I would like to thank you so much for the information you have shared with us today. You've been very gracious with your time. I would like to encourage the audience to visit the ESA website at esa.int to learn more about the James Webb Space Telescope. And I would also like to encourage them to visit the 4i Magazine YouTube channel for more episodes of this podcast. I am Federica Bressan and I'll see you next time. So long.